On today's special episode of Homeworthy, we're bringing you seven of our favorite vintage home decor designs handpicked by our editors. From cottages in the bucolic English countryside to small apartments in Charleston, South Carolina, these tastemakers are experts when it comes to hunting for antiques and incorporating them into their beautifully unique homes. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! This is one of my favorite things in this kitchen this collection of copper moulds, um, which I've built up over years. Um, and they're all different, sort of, as you can see, lots of different shapes um, and ages. And actually, so they all have slightly different kind of textures and patterns and colourings, but I quite like that. And I use them for cooking. Um, I'll use them to make jellies, to make panna cotta. Um, some even like this one, I love this one, so cute, with a little teapot on top. It's really cute, like if you butter it, you can make a kind of bunt cake, you know, like a nice sort of spongy cake in there. Um, but I also, like for storage, I sort of have them on the wall and they double as decoration. And my absolute favourite, I mean, I don't like to play favourites, but my absolute favourite is the pussycat up there that you can see that a friend sent me and she found it um, in a shop and very sweetly knew that I would love it and I'm obsessed and um, sometimes I make jelly in it and one time, this was my proudest proudest moment, I made like a sort of black velvet jelly so it was um, Guinness and a little bit of um, Prosecco I think I mixed in. Um, so it was black, so it was like a black cat, but then we did, I did set cream for the little nose and the little paws and the tip of the tail, so it had like little white nose and feet and, and tail tip, so it looked like a black cat um, for Halloween. So anyway, I, I, that's, my, that's my absolute favourite, but I, I love them all very much. I love the cherries too. Um, this is, yeah my favourites. And then over here I also have, that I'm obsessed with, this is something that we designed for Tavola. We call it the Aurora box. And it looks like a stack of plates, but it's actually a secret box. And I genuinely find this the most useful thing to have in the kitchen. So you just fill it with clutter. I mean, there's like the boys' sweets in there. I've got some matches, keys. Usually there are like coins, cables, phone chargers, all sorts of ugly bits and bobs. And you can just sort of tidy them away in there. Um, and it looks quite pretty. But also it's quite funny because like quite often, sometimes I'll have a friend over and they'll like come over and be like, oh, I'm just going to grab a plate. And they think it's a stack of plates, but it's not. Secret box. So I love that. And then this is kind of the main part of the kitchen. The hub being our cooker, which is La Conche and huge, um, and yet I still run out of oven space occasionally, but it's one, two, two double ovens and a small oven and then a warming oven and a lot of hobs. I've never run out of hobs, but I have run out of oven space. Um, but um, this is the dream to cook with, I must say. At our old flat, we bought a second-hand small Le Conch cooker and we were there for 15 years and it like I loved cooking on it every single day so when we moved in here and we were doing the new kitchen I knew instantly the one thing that I really wanted was a really big big one of these and so this kind of was the beginning of the design for the kitchen because we had this huge cooker that we needed to sort of somehow fit in um, and then everything else was kind of built around that. I mean I have a very very sweet tooth so I'm not gonna lie I love baking cakes um, and I actually, the thing I probably love the most, and for this you really need time, so it's for those moments like when I do have time, but I love making a birthday cake. So whether it's for, you know, my sons or for myself or for my husband or 
for friends. I just, the best, the greatest privilege in the world, I think, is to make someone a birthday cake. It's such a sort of celebratory moment. It's really fun to make because, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm quite greedy, so I'll kind of, like, take a, you know, a sp I'll, I'll happily lick the spoon or lick the bowl once we're done. Um, but it's a really fun thing to bake, and then it's such a kind of, like, rewarding and celebratory kind of um, dish to share with others. So the other thing that I love about this kitchen, I mean, there's lots I love about this kitchen, but is this kitchen island, which is an old workman's table that we, I found it online um, and bought secondhand. And then we had it reconditioned. So we changed the top to be marble. So it kind of picked up and matches the marble worktops in the rest of the kitchen. And then we added on the wheels. So you can kind of wheel it around. So if I'm it makes the space super flexible. So for example, if we're hosting a big party, I can kind of wheel this out onto the terrace and then put trestles in here. Or, you know, if I'm cooking um, and shooting, I can kind of move it over to a different corner of the kitchen. And I love the space being flexible. I think that works really well for us. And then here we have most of our, a lot of our food storage, which is in jars and these open shelves. And the shelves are made out of old cheese boards. So when we bought them, they already had like a lovely patina and texture to them. It didn't kind of feel too new and jazzy. And then we added on these hooks to hang all our mugs. This is my strawberry mug that we did for Tavola. That's with a lovely kind of like braided handle that I love. But I've also like collected other random ones over the years, like Christmas mugs and then... Um, these are some mugs that I designed for anthropology a few years ago. Um, so yeah, I love drinking tea from a mug. I always start the day with a mug of tea. So I love my mugs. So I don't know what the right way to make tea is, but I'm very lazy about it. And I kind of normally I'll just have a kind of tea bag um, and I'll add a splash of milk and some and some sugar. But if I'm having friends joining me for like elevenses or morning tea, then I will put special tea in the teapot and use a strainer um, and usually use teacups rather than mugs um, but not always sometimes it's just nice to drink from a mug because it's very cozy and com comforting to drink from a mug and then here we have our big sink and we've got two dishwashers one and two that one is now going to keep opening um, but which I love because you know I do so much cooking and there are a lot of pots and pans and a lot of plates that need washing up. Um, and it is the greatest luxury in the world, I've got to say, having two dishwashers, it's absolutely life-changing. Um, so I love that. And then we have this other little wooden table that's also on wheels. Um, so you can kind of move it around again, just trying to keep the space as flexible as possible. And last but not least, my um, yellow sunshine fridge, which I absolutely adore, just because it's such a happy color. I mean, what's not to love? Cheese. Lots and lots of cheese, um, milk, cream. Um, I love, I'm quite lazy, so I love some like chopped onion in the freezer. That we probably like always have, maybe a bottle of Prosecco or something like that. And I, we've been away for like a week, so my fridge is gonna be kind of quite mortifying. Some veggies in there. Um, usually there are some like condiments languishing in a, in a far corner that have maybe been there a bit too long. Um, but yeah, butter, lots of butter. So I'd say the decor of our home feels very, it's very colorful. I love color. I always dress quite colorfully. Um, I don't own many black dresses. I'm always wearing lots of color. Um, I love vintage things or antique things. So I'd say our home has a lot of character. It's full of kind of quirky bits and pieces that maybe I found in a flea market or on eBay or here and there. So it's sort of um, maybe quite eclectic. Um, lots of, um, it's quite chintzy. So I love a floral, hence my floral dress. Um, so there's quite a lot of like um, floral prints um, and stripes as well. I love stripes. Um, so it's a mix, I'd say, of florals and stripes. Um, and the colours are all quite sort of like pastel coloured, um, other than this room, 
which is sort of, this is like, I think kind of like, I like to think of like the house as like ice, ice cream colours. So this is the raspberry sorbet room. Um, but our kitchen is more of like a soft kind of, I'd say, um, uh, custard, custard ice cream. It's yellow or like a, like, like a nice lemon sorbet. Um, and then we've got like pink finishes, like soft pink finishes that are more like a, like a sort of a, a strawberry ice cream or a strawberry milkshake. Um, so I love kind of soft colours as well as poppy colours um, and and just light and kind of, I mean it's definitely a very imperfect home, it's always really messy, it's full of clutter, I love clutter, I love having all the things that I love around me, um, so it's, a busy, it's busy as well. So now come with me, we're going to go upstairs to the living room, living room study part of the house. So this is our living room, welcome. Um, this is the couch. Um, it's super comfy, super, super squishy. I've actually slept on this couch and it's unbelievably comfortable. Um, we kind of fallen asleep watching a movie and then um, spent the night here. But, and we had it upholstered in this uh, chintz that I'm completely obsessed with. It's a Jean Monroe design and I just love it. I love this intense blue and I love the big pink roses. And then we ended up actually having curtains to match in the study. So they kind of, it sort of draws the two rooms together a little bit. Um, but I could literally like live in a house that was covered in this chintz. I love it so much. But my other favorite thing in this room possibly is our, well, we use this as a bar. It's actually a 1950s Fornasetti fridge that we had um, restored so that it works and we kind of use it as a bar so we keep kind of all the Prosecco and um, drinks that need to be cold there and then have our sort of um, liqueurs and so forth on top. But I kind of love, you know, I love all Fornasetti things but especially the old stuff I think is kind of really the best. So I was very excited to find this. This fireplace we put in, um, because all the chim, you know, the, the fireplaces have been taken out of the house, so we sort of had them put back in. And this actual, um, this marble fireplace, we bought in, in an antiques shop in um, Brussels and then had it fitted. Um, and, I, and, I, and I do love it. And it's nice and deep, so you can kind of put, I haven't got anything on here today, but quite often I'll put, you know, vases of flowers or books or whatever, you can kind of decorate it quite nicely, which I really like. And then coming round, um, I, other things that I love in this room, this is a picture of my grandmother. Um, this, I think it's the only picture I have of her actually, um, in black and white, I think she looks very glamorous. So I, I love, I love this photo of her. And then here I have my sort of little trinkets, my scented candles, my matches, little vase of flowers. This is a, Murano glass vase um, for, for the, that we do for Tavola and it's the first design of vase that we did for Tavola in, in this lovely sugar pink was the first colour. Now we make it in um, lots of other colourways in blue and like a sort of soft gold and you know clear with different things and but I, I think because it's the first one we did it's very very special to me so I always have that there. I feel like I always have quite jazzy lampshades um, I, I, I do like a colourful uh, lampshade. This one's quite faded now and it's uh, fabric, whereas most of our other lampshades through the house, I think, are, are paper. But I, it was just quite a beautiful e-cap print that I kind of really liked. And I think because the base is, is quite simple, um, it's nice to have a little pop of colour up top. Um, and then, I mean, I love our stripy curtains as well. So this is just the sort of red um, ticking. Um, like a red stripe, like much thinner than the sort of pink stripes downstairs. And then here, oh, I love this. I've got my sort of bits and bobs, like random collection of vintage cookbooks. The Book of the Onion. I mean, isn't that not a fab cover? If nothing else, 150 ways of cooking it, um, the onion. Um, so there's this guy called Ambrose Heath, who was a very prolific cookery author in the in 1950s UK. And I buy a lot of his books on Abe Books. Um, here he is again, vegetable dishes and salads, partly because they actually are full of like really fun um, and quite 
like unusual recipes in it by today's standards, but also because whoever was designing his book covers was supremely talented and they're all these like really fun, colourful, um, quite like iconographic um, covers, which I love. Well, let's follow me to the office. This is a super fun vintage film poster that I found here in Marrakesh as well. It's a Vigilante, um, a film by Stanley Donan. Um, and then actually here, when you go to the office, I have this amazing vintage door that I repainted. And uh, voila. So here you can see my workspace. I love this place because it gives me a lot of cre creativity and inspiration. Um, this is a wonderful desk I found. It's vintage. It's a, a vintage airport desk from Kenya, actually, from the 20s. Love it. Um, and on it, there are some little objects. This is a beautiful ceramic lidded um, box by Laura Boeing. She's a friend of mine. She's actually quite collectible. She does a lot of amazing furniture now. I have also this beautiful Art Deco vase that I had from England and this trolley. It's a modernist trolley from the 50s and this beautiful sort of concave mirror. Um, I also love in particular these little trinkets which is a um, smoking set by Hermès. Um, it's vintage, it's from the 1940s. I also love here at my little boxes and vases. So this is again Lara Boeing who made the other um, lidded box. And uh, also, for instance, this um, light here is really beautiful with um, this, this three way, this three colorway, which is red, black and white and it just makes it a really good juxtaposition so you see the red black and white on the bowl here and you can see the graphic lines here in this um, office now Yves Saint Laurent was a big inspiration of course because so when I used to work with him back in the day so you see a portrait of him here um, and then there's also a portrait of Paco Rabanne back in the day there's also a po um, portrait of Catherine Deneuve painted by uh, David Downton, a f fantastic um, British illustrator. When and Monsieur Saint Laurent uh, decided to auction off his house uh, in Rue Babylon, this chair was for sale. And uh, it was quite incredible. It had this most astronomical um, sum that he went for, but I, I tried a bit and it <laughs> I was successful. But. Um, so my friend in England, Evandro, who has a wonderful upholstery business, said, oh, why don't I make this chair for you? And I had this incredible um, vintage leopard, real leopard fur coat, which I couldn't sell. I don't have a certificate. So I said, okay, let's make a chair. So we actually made this chair and it's a total identical replica of the original Salon chair. And funnily enough, if you can see, um, you hear it's in the auction catalog. I can show you. Um, here you can see the chair and uh, it's really beautiful. It's actually perfect. Well, these beautiful gates that you're looking at here are actually remnants. They're actually French gates. I actually had them in my garden in my other home. And then one day when we were just moving in here, I took a measurement and they were exactly a perfect fit for here. Um, if you look, there's actually a key slot in one of these. I can't remember where Jonathan knows where it's at, but it's down below here someplace. And we noticed that it was cut right here at the bottom. So these gates were probably like eight or 10 feet tall. Um, but we bought them as these fragment remnants and we love them just the way they are. And I think they work spectacularly as this entry to this special room. Inside of here, actually, this was, uh, I always wanted Zubair wallpaper, couldn't afford it, but I actually ended up with this um, painted by Two Worlds out of New York City. And a uh, nice lady, I can't remember her name, they're out of business now, I believe, but um, they used to do several projects for me, I, furniture for clients and so forth over the years. And we had done so much business together back in the um, 90s and 2000s 
that one day she said, I have this, it was returned by a customer, they, it didn't fit their needs, um, would you like to purchase it? And she offered it to me at about half the price that she would have given it to anybody else. And it's made quite the theme for this room. Uh, you know, tea is also an Asian um, beverage uh, brought to us by the English. And um, I love collecting silver. This is all sterling. Um, this is actually Georgian silver. And um, it is uh, kind of my pride and joy. I just love, I actually have a continental service in the living room that's much bigger. But this is the one we use the most often. Most of the rooms are set up all ready to go. I have sugar in here. Uh, the biscuits are not in here. This is, a this is an Irish biscuit box. And um, I love the etching on it. I just think it's beautifully done. Jonathan found this at an antique shop. And I've been in love with it ever since. I just love the little masks and so forth on it and all the chasing. Like I say, it's a lazy visit. So I actually just pop over to the pastry shop and we'll have macaroons and we'll have baby Napoleons and uh, French uh, tarts and things like that. Um, and I will make some uh, cucumber sandwiches and things like that. Almost always. I'll also make uh, egg salad as well. And we make that as a very quick little gathering place to, for us to share um, a few uh, stories with our best friends. We're on our way upstairs to the rooms where the private life takes place. It's really not private up there. I'm just making stuff up. This painting was done by a friend, a very good friend of mine, Johnny Monteleone, and he is a very incredible painter. And he does an allegory here that actually is all about his search for his for a faith. Um, he is an agnostic of sorts, and his mother was actually Catholic, and she was one of the kinds of Catholics that went to mass four or five times a week. She's very devoted and he painted this painting and it's called The Known. It's about a man who has actually died. The man here that we see, he's dead. It's symbolized by the closed watch. If you look carefully, there's this um, pocket watch that's closed and you see these two women who are holding him back. They don't want him to go. He's walking through a portal which is actually in the shape of a headstone and he says this is the last moment that he and his mother actually agree upon. Um, everything beyond this is something they disagree about. He, she thinks that this man's going to heaven or to a hell and uh, he believes that this is probably the end of all that exists in the world. And um, he painted this painting to, as a tribute to his mother and his struggle about religion and I thought it was an ama amazing painting. It was given to us as a gift by him um, after the competition. It won an um, honorable mention I believe and uh, Jonathan and I had done the, uh, knowing the story behind it, we, in our workshop we created the frame which is the headstone. We are now at one of my favorite things in the whole house. These, this was something that was done during COVID and if you see the little squirrel here and the little owl we found a carver in Russia, of all places, and we gave, told him what we wanted, and he did these for us. Um, he, the little owl is saying good night to us when we go to bed at night, and the little squirrel greets us in the day. And uh, they're all made of, out of white oak, and they were made to match even the species of wood to um, the original railings that were here. We also did a rampant line, which is down here lower, and um, symbolizing an English uh, manor house, which this is not. We're playing games here. This is our grand illusion is what I like to say. <laughs> um, and here what I have is this beautiful um, verdure tapestry which is from the 17th century. It's something that I always wanted. If you looked in the living room on the, on the um, little canopy in there, there's uh, a couple of little verdure tapestry pillows and there's also um, another one on one of the tables and then there's this one and if you look there's this beautiful bird and there's a castle in the background it's a little faded but it's right here 
there's a castle in the background. Um, this was something that we, we bought online probably, I don't know, 15 years ago, maybe more. Yeah, it was in our old house, so it's probably almost 20 years ago now. Um, just love this. One of my favorite things in the house. This room got its nickname, the Jane Austen room, from a friend of ours who's a fellow decorator, Eric Lysdahl. Every time he would stay here in this room, he'd say, I feel like J I'm living in a Jane Austen uh, book. <laughs> anyway, so we now, uh, you know, we refer to it as a Jane Austen room. We love to pretend we're pretentious, but we're really not. This is a fabric that was actually sold to Bunny Mellon, and I was able to purchase a yard of it. I won't even tell you the price of it. It is um, something that most people would faint to think that they would spend that kind of money on. Um, anyway, I, I was able to get, it's actually a half a yard, um, and I'm very lucky to have it. It's starting to fray a little bit at the edges, but I'll never change it. I can't believe that I have such a thing in my house. Um, most of this furniture came from a very special house here in Long Island called Knoll, and um, they were taking the house apart, and uh, Christie's or Sotheby's, I don't remember, um, they, were at, they had an auction, and we were actually at the auction. We bought the bed, we bought the, the um, uh, chest of drawers and uh, curio there. We bought some other pieces as well. This bed I wanted to show you. Jonathan and I did the canopy for it, and we uh, turned these little bells. They were actually little wooden, they were little planters, and we made them into bells. And we, uh, we actually decided to call this bed the Virgin Keeper because if it shakes too much, the bells will ring. <laughs> Let me show you the rest of the kitchen. This kitchen is small, but it is mighty. One of the things that makes this kitchen really functional, even though it's tiny, is that our fridge and our freezer are actually right here below the kitchen island. They are super tiny and it probably wouldn't work for a family bigger than ours, but since it's just me and my partner who live here, it's actually the perfect place for us to keep our fridge and freezer and it frees up the rest of the kitchen without having a big standalone fridge in the way. When we moved in, these cabinets were covered in a really ugly gray vinyl. It was one of the first things we knew we wanted to change. And I love really high contrast kitchens, so I knew I wanted to paint this kitchen a color that would really pop. And initially, I was really brought in by some of the trendier kitchen colors like greens or blues, but I knew that something like this dark matte black would be so timeless and would kind of evolve with the kitchen no matter how our decor styles changed. And I'm so glad that I made this decision. I love the vignette that you get when you look into the living room in these beautiful black cabinets. So one of the ways that we save space is actually by keeping our microwave in this cabinet. For safety reasons, we always keep the door open when we're using it, but I didn't want a microwave taking up some of the valuable counter space that we had in this tiny kitchen. So tucking the microwave into the cabinets was a really great solution for us. While the kitchen is a space that needs to be functional, I didn't want to lose the character that I had built up in the rest of the house of this kind of collected space with a lot of tchotchkes and a lot of brass and a lot of just fun items. So I really love what we were able to do with this tiny little corner. We installed these beautiful wood and brass shelves and it's the perfect place for me to display some of my favorite bits and bobs that I've picked up over the years at antique stores. And one of the things that I thought was such a fun addition to the kitchen is this antique music stand that we use as a cookbook holder. I found it a couple years ago, thought it was so fun, didn't know what I was gonna use it for, and when we were styling the kitchen earlier this year, it was the perfect place to rest a cookbook while we were cooking. So these two are oyster plates, which is a very Charleston accessory to have in your house. I always go to the annual Charleston Homes and Gardens Festival, where you can look and take a peek inside some of the old historic homes in Charleston, see the way that they have been decorated. And in almost every single house, they had a beautiful collection of antique oyster plates that were often brought in from France and displayed on the wall just like these are. And since oysters are such a big Charleston delicacy, I knew that it would be the perfect kind of local homage that I could add to my home. So I picked up these two 
a matching set of beautiful oyster plates and I hope it's just the beginning of a collection that I can kind of build on over time. I love finding antique items and then finding a new way to make them functional. This is a great example of that. This is an old mailbox that was from a home in Charleston. I don't know exactly how old it is, but you can see it still has the original name of whoever lived in the house that it came from. We use it as a fun place to store Charles's leash. And if you open up the mailbox, we also store all of his dog bags in there so we can always grab them if we're heading out quickly. We have a lot of art in this home, as you can see, but this little piece gets a place of honor for a very special reason. When we live in New York for half of the year, our apartment is on Washington Square Park in Manhattan. And I found this adorable little sketch of Washington Square Park. And I wanted to kind of give it a special place in our home in Charleston, just to remind us fondly of our other home and other life in New York. And just reminds me of all of the wonderful things waiting back in New York for us when we go. And similarly, I have a little sketch of Charleston that we display in our New York home. So it just reminds me of our dual city life and makes me so thankful that I get to live in two of the most amazing cities. So we're now in the drawing room. Um, again, this is probably most akin to a formal living room um, or a formal sitting room. Uh, again, I think this was before it would have probably been where the women would retire to speak after, uh, after dinner time. <laughs> um, but for us, it's really just a room to have a lot of the things that we've traveled and collected, uh, things that we uh, really adore. And we actually use this room a lot, especially after we put Bubba down to sleep. Um, it's nice to just have a little bit of an adult time of just relaxing and maybe having a glass of wine, having probably whiskey for my husband. Um, yeah, and just appreciating the things that we have. Uh, one of my, my favorite things in this room, in the focal point, is uh, the chandelier that we um, I actually bought when I was in Paris, um, wedding dress shopping with one of my best friends, Shannon. The intention of going to Paris was just the wedding dress shop, but of course, I just want to pop into this one little shop uh, as we were walking to lunch. And this, again, this man had the most beautiful uh, shop. It was probably the size of this room, just completely rammed full of uh, different bits and pieces. And I saw this and I asked him, is it working? And he said, yeah, sure. <laughs> Again, thinking like, I'm just going to trust them, sure. Um, and getting this back on the Eurostar to London, uh, I don't think I won too many points with my friend Shannon because I think she was so embarrassed with me having this massive box. Uh, but I think it was really fun. And again, just every time I see it, I kind of think of the, the fun time that we had. Um, and it was such a nice girl's trip. Um, a, another thing that I love just about living in a period property and, and having... Uh, such an amazing home to decorate is it has all these beautiful features that we had nothing to do with. We just moved in. Um, and so, but you get to, to decorate around them. In in this room, it's really this marble fireplace. You could probably have this room completely empty and just have this fireplace and you'd be sorted <laughs> from a design perspective. But of course, uh, the magpie and hoarder that I am, uh, I, I wanted to cover it with, with all different bits and pieces. But I just think that it has such a nice focal, it adds such a nice focal point to a room. Um, it is a working fireplace as well. Um, and it's, it's one we don't actually use that often because when we want to fire, we go through to the snug um, with the bigger fireplace. But I just think that the detailing is beautiful. And it's one of those things that really makes me um, feel privileged to, to live in a, a house with this history. Um, and certainly this would have been the reception room for the malt master whenever he had guests around. This would have been the room they probably spent the most time in as he was trying to impress them. This is a brass dog um, that's what they refer to as a Hollywood Regency. Um, so this would have been made in uh, the, the 40s or 50s. Um, it's, it's amazing. For a long time, I had it on the coffee table because why not? You know, you just want to be unapologetically yourself. And I think all rooms uh, should have a little bit of humor. And I think he's, he's really fun. Um, when I brought him in, though, because I found him in London, from someone who was selling them. He, he had had in his family for about 40, 50 years. It was his father's at the time. And he said, you know, we just, we need to make space so we don't need 
a massive dog <laughs> in our house. And so when I, I took him out of the boot of the car, my dogs start barking because I guess they obviously realize it's a, it's a dog type figure. But I think he's so fun, whimsical. It's one of those fun pieces on Relic that I use quite a lot in the still lifes that I've put together because I think it's, again, unexpected uh, and, and very, and <laughs> a bit gaudy, but a fantastic way. <laughs> Um, uh, something that's maybe a slightly more muted, but a, again, a bit more sculptural is, um, what they refer to as a Benin bronze. So, um, this is probably it's hidden behind the door here. It's very heavy. So I'm going to try to not break everything as I'm pulling him out. Um, this is, I, I, I often, if I ever come across them, acquire them. Um, this is a Benin bronze. It would have been a replica, probably mid-century replica of a 19th century original um, from the kingdom of Benin, um, which is now parts of Nigeria, effectively. And it's illegal to have the original one. So I, I want to reiterate that it's, <laughs> that it's a replica, a mid-century replica. Um, but I think they're just, they're so fantastic. You might have seen one in the dining room when we were in there. Um, I always have them because I think that they're nice sculptural pieces and they're quite tactile that it makes you want to, to pick them up. Um, and I think next to, say, a classical plaster bust, that co either color and texture and material juxtaposition really looks really nice um, in a room. And again, it's all about visual interest, but it's also about living with things that you love. So, and I love them, so he's here to stay. <laughs> um, and one of the things I mentioned before is the, the piece of Hendrik Frederick Lucas Lucas that I probably would never part with. And I caveat this to say, virtually everything in our house is for sale. <laughs> like, I, I joke when I say that, but I'm also kind of serious because we use our home as a, as a way to showcase the various pieces. But there are a few things that my husband and I will never part with. And this is one of them. Um, it's just a fantastic equestrian portrait by one of my favorite artists. Um, I, again, to be able to capture a horse in its likeness or anything in its likeness, this kind of hyper-realism, I really have an appreciation for. You probably saw that with the Ramadan Hamas uh, hyper-realistic portraits. But uh, it's, I think it's really, really quite an elegant piece. It's very small. The detail is next to none. Um, and it re requires you to really kind of go as close as you possibly can just to just to see it. Um, it's titled Mermaid, um, and I got this at auction uh, probably about four or five years ago. Um, and it's, yeah, it's one of my favorite pieces. I move it around the house sometimes just, <laughs> just so I can always make sure that I see it. And we're spending a lot of time here in the drawing room uh, the past few months, so I've moved it into here. But it's been in our bedroom, it's been in the landing, it's been in the kitchen. You know, it's, yeah. It's one of my favorite pieces and it's definitely here to stay. This area in Suffolk had two different types of economies. One was um, brewing, um, so any, anything from like malt making, um, any type of brewers that are nearby, and also in textiles as well. Um, and this house was a malt master's house, so anyone that was in charge of, or the gentleman that was in charge of overseeing the, the organization of getting all of the malt in and um, processing it and then having it shipped out, he would live here. He resided here with his family. And then there's also servants' quarters and servants' stairways um, at the back of the house as well. But I think as soon as we walked in, when we saw it for the first time, and the estate agent mentioned that it had ties to Truman Brewery in London, uh, my husband, who's obsessed with craft, craft beer, said, OK, right, where do I sign? You know, he didn't, he didn't actually have to tour the property. He loved that history in itself. Um, and I'm very cognizant of when, even when I'm dealing in antiques, that I am simply a custodian. You know, a lot of the pieces I have in my home um, have been here long before me and they will be here long after me. And I just feel like I just have this privilege right now in this moment to enjoy it. Um, and then hopefully it passes on to a new owner or buyer or customer, whatever the case. And that's really the way I feel with CHAP is that we are simply the custodians and we want to do it it's the best service that we possibly could um, and add a little bit to that history. But, you know, it's been around for 350 years. I'm sure it'll be around for 350 more. So we're now making our way to the kitchen. Um, 
I think everyone says this, that the kitchen is the heart of the home, and it definitely rings true in this household as well. Um, I was going to try to pretend like I made all of this, but I certainly did not. <laughs> certainly did not. Um, but we do love to have uh, carbs on the ready whenever you're uh, a little bit peckish. So um, in this room, again, this is the part of the back part of the house. So it's a lot smaller in scale. It has lower ceilings. You'll notice um, as opposed to say the drawing room or the foyer. Um, and it's not a big space at all, um, but it certainly fits the purpose that we have it. Um, we often have the majority of our meals here sat around. And even if it's just with either our parents or our friends that come around, we always just love having a big spread um, on the, the kitchen island, which is actually something I'm very proud of um, because we made this from an old carpenter's bench. So you might be able to see the old vise and it came from um, the workshop um, of a carpenter. And we loved it so much because again, that kind of antique and old, and this isn't antique, it's probably like early 20th century, but it, it just has a really beautiful kind of age patina to it. But to make it functional, we knew that we needed to have a white clean surface top <laughs> because all the little holes uh, in the scratch marks in the top of the carpenter's bench is not conducive for cooking. So um, we found an old restaurant that was a seafood restaurant um, and they were closing down and they had two massive stainless steel tables and we effectively cut the legs off of them. I built a subframe underneath the, the tabletop and um, so that we could then attach it to the carpenter's bench. But whenever I want to make it look fancy, I <laughs> put on uh, a nice a nice tablecloth and then just set out a spread. Um, but when it's us, it's usually just the stainless steel version and then we just wipe it clean, especially with a toddler and their little smudgy fingerprints everywhere. It's, it's a lot easier to deal with. On the table, we have a selection of pastries and homemade bread. I will say that I, my friend Liz joked that every time I talked about moving out of London into the countryside, I said, oh, I can make my, I can finally make, have enough space to make my own bread. I can make my own bread. So we have homemade bread here, though I didn't make this bread, though I can make similar types of bread. Um, and then we just have some pastries, which uh, my husband loves. He works from home, so uh, he loves it whenever I set it up like a patisserie or, or something. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really fun. And it, again, this is a, a very kind of cottagey kitchen. Uh, we spend a lot of time in here. You see the dogs are in here constantly. Um, we cook, my husband does the majority of the cooking. Um, so one of this kind of splurge items in the house uh, for doing a lot of the renovation ourselves, it meant that we can really kind of splurge on the items that we really wanted was this um, eight eye Laconche uh, cooker range. And it's, it has a double oven and it cooks a 20 pound turkey in about two hours. So it is a, well worth it. <laughs> and when you have 20 hungry guests for Thanksgiving <laughs> who want a turkey in two hours, we got, we have it sorted. Um, but one of my favorite things in the house, uh, let alone the kitchen is this, this tea towel. And this is from um, this says London and it's just of one of the, one of the guards, but it's from my grandma. So we called her mama and this was in her kitchen for years and years. So my mom's mom. And it's so funny that it's almost like she knew that one day I would move here or one day, one of us would move here, but it's just really nice to have around. Um, and as a reminder of my roots in Alabama and of my mama, cause she was a formidable woman and hopefully I can be half as amazing as she was so um but yeah we just we love to have some of our just incredible things here um but it's so it's so practical like even this tablecloth this is amazing we got this in, in Rhodes um in Greece and but it, it and it looks super delicate but you can throw it in the wash washing machine and air, air dry it you know it's one of those things that we live in a house that is lived in <laughs> you, you know it might look curated now it does not normally look like this uh, we have uh, like I, I love again my american roots having these um like american quilts these antique quilts and what these are normally is, is kind of nicely draped now but what this normally does is just cover this up because we have the dogs up here you know we have bubba up here with his crayons and things and you know we just we want to make our home feel warm and inviting and I would hate to have friends come around and they feel like they couldn't relax and that's one thing that we both love to do is relax and have friends around.
We're now in the sitting room, which is the more comfy area of the, of the place. And because it is upside down, uh, the light is not the best. Even if we have a big window, thankfully, it's still quite dark, but it's nice in winter evening. It can be very cosy with all the candle lights. Uh, because I don't tend to use the spotlight any more. I mean, I, except for cleaning and tidying, <laughs> practical things. Otherwise, I lit the room by candles and it goes very, very cosy. And yeah, and it's, uh, it's um, a very nice room, I think. It's a good size. And especially if you have people coming and, you know, after having supper, you have a you know, coffee here or you start with the drinks here. It's, it's very nice. Uh, yeah, I want to point you the floor, which is uh, that amazing uh, parquet floor from the, from the Victorian school. And more than painters, uh, my dear friend, Philip and Chloe, are also good, as we call truffle pigs, for good things like that. And they found it. And they say, oh, I know you were looking for something like that. So we found that. Would you be interested? And I was like, yeah. So they, they, they got it for me. It's, it's really good. It's really pretty. And it makes them, I mean, lift the room and, and the space because the problem being in a basement, it's quite low ceiling and, you know, you don't have much windows. So it's difficult to make it glamorous or at least nice. <laughs> uh, so that parquet floor adds a lot of character to, to it. As you can see, I suppose you might have noticed upstairs, I have quite a few Pelagonians. I'm very fond of those. Also, they're very classical English. You can see them in a lot of interiors in Britain, country houses or even town, you know, in flats or houses in town. Um, yeah, they're very nice. They bring, you know, nice scent and they have lovely pink or white flowers. So there, as you can see, you have a nice painting by Luca Dutrall. So I, I've met Luke in 19 now, and I had a little things for, for personal project about having a bed and breakfast in Normandy to save my family house from the ruin. And this was planned to be in the house, but the project didn't happen. So it came to London. It's a very nice, uh, nice painting of, of men having fun and party with a martini drink. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> and there too, the drinks. <laughs> Important having a good drinks table when you have guests come. So these armchairs are 19th century in the style Louis XV, they're French. Got it from Christie's. But um, the place where they used to be, I think, were just decorative. They were not meant to be sat on because the silk is rather fragile. It's lovely gold green silk, but having people sitting on it has been worn off. It gives a bit of, 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 of what they call gentry or country house condition. But, uh, sadly, there has been, you know, upholstered with a um, sort of, of, of cotton watty thing, which is not prettiest. I was thinking about changing it, but I really like the colour of the silk, so I don't know yet if I will change them. Maybe in time, if I find something rather nice to remove and replace the silk with it. So that big tapestry behind me is quite special. It's a um, lovely scene from uh, Don Quixote. Uh, you have Sancho Pancha being lift in the air by the peasants. Uh, and uh, you have um, Don Quixote just there watching the scene. And it's, uh, it's a very nice tapestry, which might come from Sorders or Thorthobies, I don't remember, from an Astacel. And it's um, Bristol, uh, but it's, uh, it's a bit snackered, has suffered. Uh, but it's very pretty. I mean, the faces of the people are very good and it's very nice. Still colour, and some of the colour faded a bit, but it's very decorative. It's, um, it gives a warm atmosphere to the room and a rich atmosphere too. Uh, and that tapestry used to be part of 12, depicting different scenes from Don Quixote. And it was a very popular subject in the 17th century and early 8th century. And 
terms of personal style, that place, I think, could be qualified as classical with a bit of eclecticism. <laughs> I know sometimes people will pose these words, but uh, I mean, you have some tone which are, which are very classical British, like the bone through, through the house, uh, but also having I mean, that screen, which is amazing piece of, of art on itself and a very useful space because you hide a lot of things behind screen. It's very good for storage and that place needed a lot of storage. So, and, and so you have those eclectic pieces of, and with um, very traditional, I mean, the, the, um, the fabric of the building is quite traditional. It's very traditional British. So you have this classicism with the staircase, you know, the, the pine wood uh, floor uh, and fireplaces, etc. with some, some, some uh, not usual furniture for Britain, I would say. So it's a mix of things and yeah, I, I, I mean, I have a very important source of inspiration for, for interiors, which I think is one of the high peak of, of, of um, interior designer. He wasn't an uh, interior designer either. He was a fashion designer, he was Hubert de Givenchy, but he had such a good eye for, for sourcing amazing piece of arts and, and, and furniture and gathering them together and creates very, very good interiors. And so I tend to try to uh, reach that aesthetic. So uh, I don't know if I succeeded, but I'm very pleased with what I've done with the flat. <laughs> it's very, it's very nice uh, uh, um, home to live in. Even if with the flat I try to create a balance and you know kind of a, a journey, when you st you still have differences between the rooms. You start with the dining room, which is quite minimalistic in a way, if you can say, because um, I mean, some objects are still very obviously huge um, and have a huge present, uh, presence. Uh, but uh, it's much more simpler in terms of tones compared to the sitting room. So it was a bit of the things where, you know, in the dining room, especially I use it mostly for dinner parties, so it's lit by candlelight, so you, you don't really see the rest of things. And when you have your, you know, your, your dessert pudding, and then you transition to the sitting room. And after having a long and nice dinner, you want to sit soft and have a coffee or a digestif. And you want this, you know, I don't know, that kind of cocoon atmosphere. And having, you know, richer, fabric and more, you know, uh, sitting surface, which this amazing 8th century day bed, for example, you can fit four people in it, it's, it's great. It gives this, you know, nice uh, warm atmosphere and welcome atmosphere, which is, which is great. Uh, you know, just calm down and just sit there and you have your coffee or drink and it's great. The coffee table is from a, a brand. I don't know if it's. I mean, they know. I know they sell in Britain, but I, I think they're French. They're called AMPM. I know it's a very funny name for a French brand. Um, they do uh, good, um, good designer pieces for good price. I would say, um, even if there's a lot of antiques in the room, I want still a bit of more modern pieces. And especially coffee table, uh, the co I wanted a coffee table, but because the room has really much of presence with the sofa, with the cushions, with the chairs, with the tapestry, I wanted something which is which was lighter. And the fact that it's glass and brass, and it's lovely polished brass, it's not too heavy visually. And I like books, as you can see, with the bookcases <laughs> and the coffee table. And especially, I think, book, even if it's first to cultivate yourself, to grow your spirits and to learn, it's also a very nice object of decoration. <laughs> and, and it's a shame sometimes to hide them when you have beautiful covers. Um, I don't know, talk about a story uh, or magazines. I mean, magazines, you know, they're created with amazing covers and, and it will be sad to hide them in the bookshelves. Sometimes you don't have choice, but if you can display them, it's great. I mean, 
I have a few different books, which, um, oh, one particularly, from a photographer that you must know. He's very famous in America. It's Slim Aaron. I mean, this is one of his many books. It's Dolce Vita, and I love his work since I'm a child. So let's have a look at the fireplace. This is uh, hiding the back of the fireplace, which is not very interesting. Um, this, on the other hand, is interesting. It's a chalice veil. It's 18th century, early 19th century European. So it's from a um, nunnery in Britain, who was created in the 19th century. And they had an amazing archives of religious and liturgic fabric and clothes, etc. Uh, because they used to embroider stuff for the Church of England. They closed down and uh, they were doing a big sale, but for nothing, basically. Um, and I got that amazing um, uh, Charlie's Veil, which uh, is red and it's Catholic. And the red in the Catholic Church, um, especially for the liturgy, is used for the Pentecost. It's lovely, it has gold thread, it has painted silk um, on it. It's, uh, it's a very nice, very nice, delicate piece of art. And you can find above the fireplace on the mantel the same things as upstairs, the collection of postcards, invitations, and thank you cards. <laughs> Before leaving that room, I just want to point a very discreet piece. Discreet. It's maybe not the word, because it's quite massive. It's an amazing solid marble bust of mercury. It uh, was made by a friend of mine called uh, Corin Johnson. He's an amazing sculptor. He's based in Clerkenwell. And uh, yes, he, he made that for the Georgian Group exhibition back in 2017. And then he had it, and there it is. It's, it's, uh, it's so great. It needs a plinth, but I like it on the floor. It has a bit of modern art things. But uh, in good time, a plinth will be there, but it's so heavy. <laughs> that it's impossible to move, and to lift it, you need a very strong person, that I'm not. And, uh, and you need a very solid plinth too, so in good time, you won't receive the plinth and be lifted. But yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very good. It's after the antique uh, from um, a statue, it's a very big statue, where it has little uh, backers on his shoulder. All right, let's go to the sitting room. Uh, sitting room. Oh, and this little Pippa loves to be with me all the time. Here we are in the sitting room, one of the spots they always like to sit. This is where we live. It's right off the kitchen, which you'll see in a little bit. Um, I've got a portrait of my daughter Jonette Egg, uh, by Jonette Egley. These are some works that I have done, um, small rooms. Uh, here's another one right here. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned my sister is Dana Gibson of Dana Gibson Design. And she makes uh, toll and designs fabric for Stroheim and Rome. And she's, we're, we're just a very artistic family. Right here, I've got, um, this is a family portrait from the 1970s that my, that I did. It was one of the first people that I did. And it was featured in Country Living Magazine, which was kind of neat. And I had all kinds of orders for family portraits back then. Uh, something neat that I have right here as well are these salesman samples. Back in the day, before you would walk into a store, I guess, salesmen would go around and show miniature pieces of furniture. And these belonged to my grandmother, who was across the street. And I just... This one's really fun. This, this is exactly, not exactly, but pretty much the way it was when she had it. And she collected, uh, I, can't, I don't know if she collected, but she has all kinds of old stamps that are in here. And I've had fun using some of them to mail out uh, on letters to my friends or thank you notes or what have you. And then she did this back in 1969. She put the, uh, um, it's the first man on the moon. And she sent these all to herself um, with our names on them. And I guess she thought maybe someday we'd frame them or something. Haven't, but um, I just love this little piece right here. A little Chippendale desk.
As far as pattern, I have no rules when, when I use my different patterns. I once had a client, or I've had several clients that didn't want to use a pattern with an Oreo on a rug, which I just, I, I was actually able to talk them out of it because why can't you put lots of pattern with an Oreo on a rug? And I will say with my art, you know, I might just use a design and completely redecorate it as I place the fabrics. Um, so it's, so that's funny. I, I did, I did recently get, these are old um, grain sacks and I made them into pillows, uh, which has been nice and comfortable because this is the room that we sit in all the time and watch television, drink a glass of wine, have a cup of coffee in the morning. Just a favorite cozy little room that we have. Another uh, inherited piece from my grandmother was this pine desk, nothing fancy. She had it in a room she called Alice's room, which is sort of a catch-all room. But I loved all the little nooks and crannies and it's even got a little hidden area up here. Um, and I love displaying miniatures. I'm obviously into miniatures. I think you've probably noticed that these little silver army guys. She had four of them and I actually have my brothers and my two sisters have one. Um, so just lots of little knickknacks, but they're better than knickknacks, I think. I mean, look at this little silver windmill. I just, that just super cute to me. So over here we have uh, this corner cupboard that I got. This was my mom and dad's and I recently inherited that. And I've got more of the Gibson girl plates or Charles Dana Gibson illustrations, more of my grandmother's little roosters. Down here, I've got some of my sisters. She doesn't do these anymore, but they are just wonderful little ceramic figurines. So whimsical and fun. Little dog, a cow, and a lady. And these recent collections by uh, a artist here in Richmond that I just adored. Uh, there's, her name was Susan Gund, but they're little miniature people and fish and things inside these boxes. This uh, is a needlepoint piece that my grandmother started and I finished. But what was so funny is she had done different colors right here and it didn't matter. I mean, again, pattern, I don't have a problem with pattern. Not exactly the way it was supposed to be, but we finished it and I've had that for a long time. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.